Okay, we're going to talk about Git pull to update your production website, why you don't want to do it. I've seen a lot of people do it. I've seen it fail, like, a lot. Um, so one of the things when you do a Git pull on your live site, um, there's a number of failure modes. I'm not going to talk about all of them, but the, um, sort of the insidious ones that you may not think about is that when, you, when you're doing a Git pull, on your live production site, um, you're sort of crossing your fingers and hoping that the latest is what you actually want. And I've seen a scenario like this where this is our master branch and we have a tag good release 3.6 and we have something accidental that happened to the branch was merged in another developer was working after this code was released. It accidentally merged or committed something else. And when you do a git pull, you get this latest not the tag. So what we can do is we can say git fetch origin, git checkout, and then the tag name. That's going to put you into a deta uh, detached head state. That'll work as long as you don't have any changes to your live production site. Now I know that you don't obviously make changes on your live site. Nobody does, right? Wink, wink. It happens once a year, twice a year, you might need to make a quick change to stop the bleed, right? And nobody undoes those changes. You don't undo those changes because they're absolutely necessary. So the way in sort of one step that you can check out and get rid of any changes that are there, especially if you, know, you have a file that's there that's untracked, somebody accidentally commits a log file, the git isn't going to check out. It's going to say, I can't do this. I can't pull. I can't merge. I'm going to overwrite an untracked file, right? So you may be following all good code practices and not changing stuff on live. And it, the checkout still might fail, right? Because git is a source code manager and it's not going to um, blow away stuff. So accidentally committing a log file is going to stop um, your changes. This git reset dash dash hard and then the tag name is what you want but how many of you are actually passing the tag name that you want I bet you just have some bash scripts or some ansible or something puppet where you you just do git pull and and you're just relying on the fact that the latest this is your master branch your production branch whatever you're just relying that the latest is actually what you want you're not specifying a version Now, a secondary, okay. A secondary failure mode of do it, relying on git pull is that you don't have your compiled assets in your source code, right? It's just your source code. You have your raw less or your uncompressed CSS. How do you get those up there, right? So um, this, this chart actually represents two failure modes uh, that aren't related to the compiled, um, compiled less. What happens here is I do a git pull, and in this point in the timeline, you know, I started with a certain set of models and a certain set of schemas that matched. But when I do a git pull, now my code, my models are a different definition. I got models plus, I got the next version, but my schema doesn't match. So I immediately do a database migration because I'm using what, Artisan or South or Django, whatever. And this takes time to complete this migration. So there's a window of opportunity between here and here that my schema and my models don't match. So what happens when a browser hits your site right here? Right? Do you know what happens? Do you know about all the failure modes that can happen? Are they presented with an error? Does it wipe the database? Whatever. So um, what we have to do then is sort of put a stop page up. So right here we have to like enable a downtime page a big red stop and then we have to make sure to take it down when we're done and this is just more hassle what happens if these commands fail whatever um, another thing is composer update if if you are relying on you know you're not committing your your dependencies hopefully and this goes for pip or whatever you need to run the update stuff so you have another scenario where your models are changed but maybe the libraries that they're relying on are not so you need to wait for um, 
dependencies plus plus, right? The next version of your dependencies in order to work right. So if you're calling functions that don't exist, you have another point in time where um, the, the behavior is unknown, it's undefined. You haven't tested what this, how your models are gonna represent before you get the dependencies. Another problem is that when you're doing like Composer or Pip, a lot of times you're hitting GitHub, which is a private company. It's not, you know, whatever. It's not made by Linus. And they can sort of throttle you or stop you. I've seen this where we're going for a little while, everything's fine, and then all of a sudden Composer, you know, it doesn't work. And, and access to GitHub stops and it says, you're using a lot of bandwidth, please supply us with a key, an API key, an OAuth token, whatever. And now you have to go to each one of your live sites and install this token. One of the developers has to pick and say, well, I have a token, I guess the company can use it. It's not right, right? The, the, the company should have their own. Even if you have a private, you're paying for GitHub, whose token gets volunteered to be the one that works. So this could just completely fail, right? And the more live servers you have, uh, the higher the chances is gonna fail. So you don't wanna do this. What you wanna do, you wanna stop doing your git pull as you know, as soon as you feel comfortable, but it, this model doesn't scale. There's a lot of problems and you can't get zero downtime. You have to have your stop pages, right? Uh, an ideal way to go about this is to have like a build pipeline that produces a tar file, just a regular archive with the version number and whatnot. You do your database migrations first when you're ready to go forward. And these have to be forward compatible migrations, which means a certain subset of database migrations, new tables, new columns. You don't change columns, you don't delete columns. We can talk about that at a later time, but if these are forward compatible, it's okay that your schema is at a different version than your models, right? And hopefully your ORM can handle that. If your ORM can't handle um, the database having more columns than your code, then you need to not use that ORM because this is like the only way you can go about getting zero downtime deployments. So your 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 local server, your build server, they could be the same thing. If you're a one-man shop, go ahead and get these tools and these processes set up on your local dev, right? But you want to publish a release tar uh, you want to build a release tar, which includes updating all your dependencies, compressing your JavaScript, compressing your CSS, compressing your images, uh, and then publish that. And basically all publishing is SCP, just get it onto each of your web servers, right? You could do this before you do the database migrations, that's fine. Uh, these two orders of operation don't matter. Um, but then you want your deploy to be a separate process and what that is is that you go onto each of the machines hopefully in parallel and you untar to a new document route or the same document route either one if you do a new document route you got to make sure that your upload your file uploads and your sessions and all that are sim linked properly and all that stuff then you either um you can swap a sim link or the better thing is to update your uh web server configuration and then just do a reload. And at least with Nginx, a quick reload, um, it'll continue to service all the requests that it has uh, in flight. And any new requests will now go to the new path and get all new code and, and, and all that. So uh, tools that you wanna use, uh, my favorite right now is, you know, to build your tar, gulp or grunt, uh, I think rocket, um, what else is out there? Altax, A-L-T-A-X. Uh, all these tools you can use locally. You type like, you know, I tested my stuff. It's good. Build, build a release tar, give it a version name, automatically bump up and commit your version. Once that process is done and you start to grow and you start to get bigger, you can export that to a build server, a test server, Jenkins, whatever, but that needs to be automatic. It needs to be one command so that your integration server and your continuous deployment could just run that one command and say this code works i'm gonna tag it i'm gonna commit the tag i'm gonna push the tag and i'm going to push the release tar somewhere keep it safe and then and then that's sort of ready for publishing and deploying uh but if you're if you're going on live and you're uh just doing git pull uh there are failure modes that you probably haven't thought about 
and let's try to stop that uh, as soon as possible, right? Some of these scripts take a little bit of time to write. Make sure you get all the right parameters, find the right tool to execute them, but no, it's no excuse to just constantly go on your production systems and, and, and do git uh, update, git pull, because it doesn't scale. You're going to grow too fast and you're going to run into problems.